uh, the light uh, came through our little crystal on the window in the living room and there's rainbows all over the wall and it only happens in the spring and the fall. So if I'm seeing rainbows, then fall is here. And it's so cute, I wanna show you guys. Eee! Looky, looky. Oh no, the camera isn't really picking it up. Kind of, well, it looks a lot more defined in real life, <laughs> but I still think it's really pretty, having all the rainbows. Babe said there was a deer out. Oh my gosh, look you guys. Oh, he was here earlier. Oh, Luna, come on. Look at the baby. He looks like the same one that was here earlier. Like he's about the same size and he's eating in the same exact area. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, I hope he's finding enough food. He's so cute. Country living. It got down into the 50s last night in Georgia, so we are gonna go get the plants off of the front porch. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna put them. I have a little bit of room right here if I rearrange stuff. Wish me luck. I just, reala I just realized I have two friends and not one, so I need to go back out and get the other one, but I need to figure out where it's gonna go. I have no more space. Um, definitely a me problem. And I need to see if I have any more plastic water catcher drip pan things, okay. Hold on, I'll be right back. I have a stool outside that I can grab for this fern. Oh my gosh, I gotta show you guys the foyer. Oh. So basically we have two issues. One, obviously space. The second issue is the cats. So the plants, there's a couch right here. So the plants that we have, um, some of them are toxic to cats or if not toxic, will still cause digestive upset. We also have cats that like to do things that they are not supposed to do. So they will absolutely chew on them. But look at Luna. She's about to decide if she's actually gonna chew on them or not. Absolutely not. Luna. Case in point. Um, okay, so this is a temporary situation for tonight just so the plants don't die overnight. Um, it cooled off very rapidly uh, overnight. Was not expecting that big of a change. So I need to figure out what to do with these plants. Between two ferns. It is already 8.40. Okay. Well, I am going to 
eat my sliced apples, take my medicine or my vitamins. It's not medicine. Take my vitamins and relax and then get ready for bed because it's already 8.40. So I'm a grandma. I like to be in bed by like 9.30, 10 and then I wake up. Well, when I go into the office, I wake up at 6.30 and I'm going into the office tomorrow. So I have an early morning. Oh, I look at the my. Hi, honey. What are you doing? Oh, thanks. Thanks, buddy. I think this is the first time I'm talking. <laughs> you guys can come with me while I sign on for work. I have to walk around the plants. The ferns are still there. I need to figure out what to do with them. Oh, Sol came to say hi. Good morning. You see how little chunks of his tail fur is missing? <clears throat> he got one of those gnat traps wrapped around his tail. I don't know how. Um, and it's so sticky that I had to cut it out of his tail. And this poor guy was like crying. Um, I almost cried for him because he's such a little fraidy cat. Aww. You want a hug? Okay, I'm going to go give him a hug and some snuggles. A little baby. Okay, well, I'm going to also sign on for work. I am gonna go clip off some goldenrod and some other um, like fall plants and flowers that I can find outside so I can dry it and then make a little table bouquet or put it beside the TV in the living room. I don't really know yet. Um, so, sorry, I'm putting my boots on. I have yard boots. Actually, I can't put my boots on yet. I need the pruner, not the pruner. Are they pruner shears, pruning shears? The little clippy things. Anyway, I'm gonna take you guys with me. And then after we do that, we can do the Q&A from the questions you submitted because you guys are so wonderful. Let's see. Can this? It is so freaking nice outside. Oh my gosh. Okay. There's Goldenrod back over here. Oh. Oh, there's some. Oh, that's where the deer sits over there. Okay, there's goldenrod there, there, there's a shit ton of it there, but this one is the easiest to reach because it's the closest to the fence. Oh, and we have a baby pine tree. That would actually look pretty cute. Or is that dog fennel? Oh, I've never seen dog fennel this large. Look at this. I thought it was a baby pine from back there, but it's not. Okay, and then we have the goldenrod bright and huge and then what else we could use the Chinese privet I feel like that stays pretty green and at this point in the year oh the uh one second can I set you down on the ground let's see my yard boots
Okay. I have privet. And I have goldenrod. So, we can go in. It is so hot in the sun. Like, it feels really nice outside, but oh my gosh, the sun is burning me. Use the plants as an umbrella. Okay, I grabbed my coffee. I'll sit on my little table over here. I have my coffee mug from yesterday on the table, but we're not going to talk about that. Where's my phone? I was going to say, I know I left it up there somewhere. Okay, for this Q&A, I was going to go back through... Oh, my phone's about to die. I was going to go back through and find the questions. So how would I do that? I think it was only on two videos. Q&A. Should I say people's names? Or, I think so, right? To like credit the person? But it, okay, in the future, if you do not want your name read in the Q&A, can you please tell me? <laughs> and for now, I am just going to assume that people are okay with it if they've used their name on their YouTube channel. Lana had a few questions. Hi, Lana. Um, so I was wondering what state do you live in? We live in Georgia, in the US. Um, and then when you lived in Mexico, was it because of your job or your husband's? Uh, it was because of my job. The company that I work for is a global company, so they have expat positions in like Europe, Asia, kind of all over. So I applied for an expat position through them. Sorry, I had the hiccups now. I applied for an expat position through them. Um, they typically do like a two-year contract, but you don't actually leave the company. Um, you just live in a host country. So uh, you have a home country and a host country. Why am I going into all these details? Anyway, that was not the question. It was because of my job. <laughs> um, without telling me the name of your company, where you work, what is your position? So when I was an expat, um, I did demand forecasting. So it was a lot of numbers and data and overall just like inventory management. Um, and now, well, I did that like right out of college. I did that at a different company based in New York City for like a year and a half-ish, I believe. And then I came to this company that I'm at now and I did the demand forecasting for about six years. I really like numbers. Uh, I think math comforts me because <laughs> it's like, you know, you just have an answer or you don't. Um, and then when we repatriated, it was during lockdown. Um, so I think a lot of companies were in this weird phase where, uh, I don't know, like a lot of measures were being taken, like hiring freezes, pay cuts, layoffs, stuff like that. So I repatriated during a time where my company uh, at least like the part that impacted me was a hiring freeze. Um, so normally when you repatriate at my company, it's up to you to find your own job to come back to. Um, of course, like the company will help you, but really like the onus is on you to do the work to find it. But because there was a hiring freeze um, and we had expats all over the world that needed to come back to the US, it was sort of like, here is where we are down at headcount. Are you interested in any of these jobs or do you wanna stay on your same team and kind of wait it out until everything uh, like blows over or improves. Um, so out of the teams that were listed, I chose to go to a new team because I had been doing what I had done for a very long time and I ended up in the project management space. So I did not come from tech. I have no tech background, but I am now currently in a tech space. So that was a pretty big adjustment. Um, and project management, I hate to even say that it's that because I help people who do project management. But if you guys have ever heard of like a PMO, a project management office, I would say we are like kind of like that, but not really. But yeah, in the tech space, but I live on the business side. Okay, I found the other questions. And first up is Mary. So hi, Mary, and thank you for submitting questions. Uh, she asked, when, where and when 
did you meet babe oh because i always call him babe the reason that i call him babe is because his name is also alex and i don't want it to sound like i'm talking in third person <laughs> um and yes it is just as weird as you think it is sometimes uh we met in 2015 um we dated like in 2015 we were pretty much like inseparable until we became like official officially dating and then after like six months of dating we took a break and then we ended up getting back together our break how long was our break i want to say it was like six months but it might have been like nine months i don't remember but anyway we ended up getting back together like spring of 2017 i think um and then we moved to Mexico summer 2017. So we actually ended up getting married June of 2017. Um, so yeah, we just celebrated our five year wedding anniversary this past summer. Question number two, when and where did you meet your fur babies? So good question. Um, Charlie over here, old lady, she was actually born in my childhood bedroom. Uh, I remember when I was really, really little, I think I was in kindergarten. It's like four or five. I might have been in kindergarten. I heard um, a little kitten crying outside of my bedroom window. And it was this all black cat with big blue eyes and a little white spot on its neck. So I named it Sapphire. <laughs> and that was actually Charlie's grandma. So uh, I kind of had like the whole line. Um, I actually like when I went to college, I took her and her brother. Her brother sadly passed away um, in the fall of 2016. Um, but she's still kicking it. She's great. So yeah, I've had her, um, her like cat family basically since I was five. So I've, I've had her since birth. I watched her come out of her mother. <laughs> the other two, so Soul back here and Luna, you want to say hi? Come here in case people haven't met you yet. Cause you're so cute. The, she's a snuggly one. So they are four. We call them the twins. They came from the same litter. Um, they turned four in May. When we were living in Mexico, we thought, you know, like Charlotte started to slow down. She was getting older. So we just wanted to get a little kitten so they could learn from each other. And like Charlotte could have a friend because she was also pretty depressed. Turns out that Charlotte much more appreciates being the only cat in the household. So it took a very long time for them to warm up to each other. Um, but the kitten that we adopted, which was Luna, turned out to be super athletic super super athletic and she just requires a lot of mental stimulation and interaction which my older cat um, just didn't care to do all of that so we got a hold of the woman that we adopted Luna from at the time her name was Gigi and we asked if uh, she had like any of the other litter mates and she still had Sol which was her actual like litter brother um, so we took him in and they are just like two peas in a pod and the household environment improved, improved very, very much. The twins were like running and playing and all happy by themselves. And then Charlotte got to go back to her quiet days and snuggling with mom. So everyone is happy now. Um, but yeah, so we actually took Charlotte to Mexico with us. And then when we repatriated, we came back with three cats. Um, so yeah, uh, going to and from Mexico with cats really isn't that difficult. You just have to, like, you know, take them to the vet, make sure they have their shots, their documentations, documentation. Uh, they have these little pet passports that even have like little pictures. They're kind of cute. Um, so like the pet passport itself is not necessary, but all of the like vaccination forms and everything that are in the passport, those were necessary. So it's just a really cute way to have them available and to show which one belonged to which cat. Um, question number three, why did you decide to become a vegan? I kind of wish that I would have looked at these before I sat down to record. Um, I, I don't know how to answer this because, okay, I currently do not subscribe to the label vegan for a few reasons. I'm not entirely sure if I'm comfortable sharing, but one of them is just, um, uh, how do I say it? Like experiences. So if we are traveling and there is a specific cultural food, um, as long as it doesn't have meat, 
I make exceptions for dairy and eggs so I can experience other cultures through food. I don't know what I would even call myself. I, I don't know, plant-based. I think I've just been saying plant-based and that's fine with me. Um, but why I even decided to give up and go like cold turkey vegan back in the day. So spring 2016, I remember I was eating something at my kitchen table and I had her, Charlie's brother, in my lap. And I, I don't even remember like how this thought popped into my brain, but I was like, I don't know how I can justify like caring for this tiny little fluffy thing that clearly like has feelings and thoughts and his own personality and yet I'm eating something that is objectively and scientifically proven to be smarter and more um, emotionally capable than him. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't get past that. So that's where I landed. I think I still have like mixed up feelings about everything and I don't think that there's a perfect answer and I don't think that moral ethical choices are black and white i really don't and i also don't really care how other people choose to fucking eat because that's their business and what they put into their body is their choice number four what do you do for a living i think i kind of described it in the last question um, but i do work for a major corporation and i am in the tech space for project management and i live on the business side so it's a corporate office job um, we do two days in the office, three days at home, work from home, typical nine to five, Monday through Friday. And then I also have a skincare company. Um, it's really just like a passion project right now. It doesn't really generate uh, like crazy profits or anything, um, but it's still a way for me to have an outlet for my creativity and just enjoy herbalism in a different way. And I also really like skincare, but my skin is so reactive and sensitive to everything like even the sensitive skin stuff that creating my own stuff and using an herbalism influence it's the only thing that has made my skin clear so i'm just going to stick with that oh number five why did you decide to get into skincare uh, <laughs> there's like a few different pieces so in college um i didn't have all the funds in the world so i was trying to find like how can I take care of my body and not spend a ton of money um, and then I started to realize like no matter what types of products I used my skin just it didn't work I either broke out in rashes or it looked like um, I don't know like red red scaly itchy patches sometimes or just like all of these tiny little bumps everywhere nothing ever really worked um, and my skin was just like irritated and bumpy all the time So I started to look into more like plant-based skincare And I don't I think I honestly think that I fell into that whole like green wash marketing where they're like, oh plants are better Which for my skin personally, yes, it has been but it does not mean that plant-based skincare is just somehow inherently better Objectively for everybody. So I just want to make that clear I personally love plant-based skincare. I'm not saying that it's right for everyone, nor am I saying that it's better than anything else. Um, so yeah, I found, like I dabbled in plant skincare. Um, I started isolating, uh, using products to find out which ingredients my skin just really didn't like. So like silicone, certain oils. Um, I then found this article about even different oils that are used in skincare and how the different acids like oleic acid and linoleic acid in oils can have a drastic difference on acneic skin. So now I even know to avoid oils that are high in oleic acid. So I like one of the products that I make, it's a balm. It is very thick. It's butter and oil, but I can slather that stuff on from head to toe and it will not break me out. It will not give me a rash. And it's because the um, constituent profile within all of the oils that I use is actually helpful to acneic skin rather than it being like high in oleic acid and clogging everything up. So yeah, um, I think it was just like a journey of learning and discovery. And now I can see how minimal skincare in my case makes the best impact. So 
kind of got hooked on it that way. Um, six, do you have any other business dreams? I do. I would really love to own a brick and mortar herbalism store. Um, I would like to grow, dry, sell, package my own herbs and help people. Um, I would like to dabble into naturopathy, but I also really, really like what I do in the corporate space. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how to marry those two because one is data and analytics heavy and one is just creativity and people focused. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I would love to be self-sufficient and have multiple streams of income. I just, I don't know how to rein in all of my passions and actually make them generate a profit that is robust enough to sustain my family's life. Um, seven, last question. How are you feeling? You are very sweet. Um, I've been feeling really good. My symptoms have been extremely minimal. Oh my gosh, there, I have to tell you guys about this app that I found. So that book that I was using, great book. It was, uh, I have it somewhere. It was in a past vlog that I did. It was a book. It was called like Multiple Sclerosis Journal or something. It's blue and white. I found it on Amazon. It was relatively affordable for what you're getting out of it. But the trouble was, is I was forgetting to fill it out every night. And then like what you had to fill out was just really manual. So I was like, you know, there has to be an app for this. Like there has to be, or there has to be some sort of like habit tracking app that I can then like tweak to be a symptom tracker. Well, it turns out that there is a symptom tracker app for MS and it is called Amy Lynn, Emily Lynn, Emily Lynn. Mm. Come on phone. Please. There you go. Oh, my battery is dying. My battery is dying. I'll be right back. The camera is still charging. Um, I came outside to have lunch and I'm having breakfast for lunch. So I have toast, apples, um, beyond sausage, and just egg with some of the chili peppers from the random flower bed chili pepper plant. Here's my breakfast for lunch and then I'm also having this and of course my pills oh i forgot my water that's okay show you guys my view my breakfast view i forgot to finish the q a after I ate, uh, we went to the thrift shop and then we found a Mexican bakery. So we went and got Pan de Muerto for Day of the Dead because it's October. Um, and I just kind of hung out at the house and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I had a few questions left. Um, and the questions are from my new internet friend from the Netherlands. Um, and they don't use their name in their YouTube channel. So I'm going to respect that. So first question, what was your favorite place in Mexico and did you visit some of the temples? So yes, uh, we did go to Teotihuacan and we lived in Mexico City for three and a half years, but we traveled around to like Guadalajara, PBR. Um, I would say to, I feel like this might be a cop-out answer, but my favorite place was actually Mexico City where we lived because it's such like... The city itself has so much to offer. The people are just wonderful and genuine and welcoming and the culture is vibrant and the food is so good and there's a lot of history and depending on your personality type or what you're looking for, you can have what you want. Like they have a really ritzy area um, that has like high-end shops and a Michelin star restaurant. Um, and then there's also another part of the city that's like very green and full of like smaller cafes and restaurants and mom and pop places. And um, there's a ton of museums. I think that it's the city with the most museums per capita in the world, I think. So yeah, um, if you want to like go out and go clubbing, you can. If you want to go to museums and libraries, you can. It's just, I love that city so much. Um, and then my favorite type of ice cream, I actually don't like sweet stuff. 
So I'm not a big ice cream person, but uh, I do remember I used to really, really like strawberry ice cream. Um, I have only had one non-dairy strawberry ice cream and it was from Trader Joe's and it was not good. But I've had the Natamu ice creams. I've had the So Delicious ice creams. Those are both very good. Both of those brands, I don't think you can really go wrong with any of the flavors. And then I've also had the classic, like the non-dairy Ben and & Jerry's, and it's also good. Um, oh, actually, now that I think about it, I did have a strawberry. It was like strawberry marshmallow non-dairy Ben & Jerry's in their actual like brick and mortar store. I think it's in Dayton with my best friend. So I lied. I've had two strawberry vegan ice creams. Um, one not so good, one good. Um, and then any countries, places you would like to visit, Patagonia is on my list. Patagonia is also on my list. I also would really love to see Scotland. I also, sorry, I feel like I have cat hair in my face. I also would really love to go to the Galapagos, um, New Zealand. Uh, I don't know, I have a lot, I have a lot of places. Just any place that can make me feel like stunned by its beauty. I don't want to like be out and about in this like big like hubbub of people <laughs> in a busy city. I just want to see beautiful landscapes and I don't know, just appreciate earth. But I would say if I was only allowed to travel to one place over and over and over, it would be probably first place, the Azores. Just it's so beautiful. Just look up pictures of this place. A-Z-O-R-E-S. Just Google pictures. Um, wonderful. And then the other place that would be competing for the one place that I would go back to is Iceland. When I went to Iceland, that was my first time being so utterly stunned by Earth's beauty that I cried. And I feel like everywhere I travel, I will be forever seeking that feeling. So yeah. Azores and Iceland, favorite places, and in the future, um, just more beautiful landscape places. And I'm always down for good food. I'm going to finish editing this vlog and get it up. Um, so it's currently Sunday, October 2nd, so I have my Mom's Weekend vlog up, so you will see this the following Sunday. So happy October 9th. While you guys are watching this, I will be finishing up my sleeve on my right arm. So the next time you guys will see me, I'll have like ink all over my arm right here on the top, but I'm so excited. I really hope that you guys uh, like what I'm choosing. Should I leave it a surprise? I'll give you a hint. It's kind of going with like this whole vibe, but more. And it's not just like flowers and stuff. I think it's a pretty cool idea. So anyway, see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.